Hello again, folks. <laughs> Good to see you. It's been minutes, absolutely ages, and uh, I've just had enough time to go and grab a cold cup of coffee, and uh, and we're off. So it's great to see you again. As I say, it's been a while. Um, but in all seriousness, it has been a long time, everybody, since we've had a chance to sit down and just talk about music, a, a bit of a deep dive. And uh, those of you that are fans of the deep dive, I haven't seen you for a while, it's great to have you back. Thanks so much for coming along. And, uh, well, we started out with these deep dives in September last year uh, as a way of bringing a little bit of that that sort of added sort of added value, if you like, the stuff that goes around the singing um, to, to kind of help people feel a bit more confident about their music making and I think above all, all else to allow you to feel that you have permission to enjoy music and that to feel give, give us a permission to call yourself a musician so we started out in September by looking at some music theory if you recall and we we worked on sort of grade one associated board theory we did some history this is something new we're gonna have a look today and over the next six weeks at composition and if anyone is sitting there at the moment uh, thinking, well, um, I'm sitting here with my pen and paper and I'm expecting to learn exactly how to compose, it's not that kind of an exercise. In fact, com composition for me is not that at all. Uh, and so we're going to look over the next six weeks at a number of techniques that I have used over the years to work with young people, with, uh, with adults, with anybody who wanted to learn to compose. Um, I'll share some of my preferences and my tips and tricks on how to write. And at the end of it, what I would love you all to do, even if you didn't actually end up composing anything that you would call a piece of music, I hope you'll have an understanding as to you know, how people do this and how people actually write music and put, make that decision. You know, how do you make that all-important decision as to what note must follow the note you've already played? So that's the, that's the intention behind this, uh, this course, everybody. And thank you so much for, for being here and, uh, and for, for uh, joining me for this. Dorothy's saying, what, I have to get up early for six weeks? It's worth it, Dorothy. It's honestly, it will be worth it. It'll be lots of fun. Um, so today, everyone, what we're going to do, again, totally different to, to any of our normal uh, rehearsals. I'm just going to get this up on screen. It's the right one. Here's my here's my presentation slide. I, I am a teacher, so here are my, my uh, outlines for the day. These are my aims and objectives. We're going to start in a moment, just talk about what is it what does it mean to compose? What is it? Um, a quick outline of my plan for the six weeks, and then we'll start and we'll do some improvisation. In fact, we might start off with that because I don't want to do too much talking in a, in a course about composing. But very, very quickly, I want to ask you something, everybody. I've, I've pulled a score off my uh, shelf at random, uh, just a, a random piece. Uh, Elegia, I, I, I don't know it. To be honest, it looks a bit, bit big. God, can you imagine singing all that through Monday? Goodness me. Anyway, so what we have here is a whole load of printed matter. Now, is this music? Is the question I'd ask you. Is this a composition? And the answer to that is, well, if this is a piece of music in the same way that this is a an air cooler. And this is a piece of music in the same way that this is a car. All right. This is a, an instruction booklet for a car. And this is an instruction booklet for a piece of music, okay? And if anybody thinks that composing is exclusively producing this stuff, you, you may need to have a think again, okay? In order to turn this into music, you have to have a whole load of very specific equipment. You have to have a choir, you have to have a, an orchestra or an organ, you have to have a conductor. You need all sorts of stuff to turn this into the sound that we take on board and we acknowledge is music. And once you've got to that point, then someone will say whether it's good or not, yeah? So composing is not sitting down with a piece of parchment and a piece of paper. That is beyond composing. That is you know, a master composer, somebody who can write an instruction booklet to help other people produce that piece of music. What I feel composition is, and something I've always said to my students, composition is to music what drawing is to art, uh, what doodling is to art. Composition is to music what writing limericks is to fine poetry. You know, it, it really is. It is broad. It is a creative act. And in all seriousness, ladies and gentlemen, despite what you may have been told uh, in your previous musical classes and by your teachers, there isn't actually a right and a wrong way to do it. You can certainly impose rules on composition. But if you, as the creative artist, as the person out there uh, who's 
who's choosing to write a piece of music, if you decide to write a piece a certain way, that's the way it goes. Okay, you are the composer. So that's the first thing to say. Composition is a powerful creative act involving a person making a series of decisions as to some sounds that are going to be played. And in some cases, there may not be sound. Remember that composition involves silence as well as as well as well notes. So it's a really huge, open-ended, broad topic in the same way that writing is an open topic. Art is an open topic. Okay, so I'm not going to be sitting here teaching you, say, right, get your pen out, let's draw a treble clef and so on. It's not that kind of course. Um, so let's do a little bit of improvisation. Let's start off, and everyone can take part in this. You can take part in this live. If you have an instrument and you want to play rather than sing, then I'll give you a minute to go and get an instrument. You're going to need an instrument that can play D, F, G, A and C at concert pitch. All right? If you want to improvise along with us. Okay? Uh, but if you don't if you don't want to get your instruments, folks, just sing for me, okay? We're going to do a little bit of improv. And uh, don't worry, it's not like uh, standing up in front of everybody. You're going to be singing along at home, and everyone will be uh, singing along with me, which is going to be great. Looking forward to it. So I'm going to bring my garage band window up here, or sorry, garage band, my awesome garage band uh, window. And I'll be using this quite a lot as we go forward today. Um, and so what I've got here is this is just what I would do with uh, with any group. We're going to start off and I'm going to sing you some calls. And I'm going to ask you to just repeat back what I sing to you. OK, so this is not a call and response. This is a call and echo. All right. So let's I'll just give you a sense of what I mean. So let's just check that the volume level is OK. Should be OK. OK, good. We can hear that. So this is our a little sort of D minor groove. OK, and I might go ba, 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 ba. Sing for me. And. Great, my turn. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn, echo. Very nice, my turn. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. And. Excellent, my turn. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. And. My turn. And. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. And. Ba, 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 ba. My turn. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. Ba, 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 ba. My turn. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. Lovely. And we'll stop that there. Thank you very much. Before our our brains go into complete D minor mode. Very, very good indeed. So what we were doing there, ladies and gentlemen, that is often the first step to uh, to making any sound at all with any group, whether they are four years old, whether they are um, fully grown adults, whether they are retirees, whoever. You start with a bit of call and echo. Now. This isn't necessarily the way you'd start composing un unless uh, unless you really want to do it like this, because really when it comes to writing music, what you're trying to do is to create, I feel, is you're trying to create ideas, moments, things that draw your audience in. And uh, if you imagine this, that music, when you're writing a song, it might, it, it has a sort of an air, a feel of a, a conversation. If you were to meet somebody on the street, socially distanced with a mask on and so on, and you would say, hello, how are you? If they were to say, hello, how are you back? You might think, uh, okay, I'm fine, thanks, how are you? And they say, I'm fine, thanks, how are you? And you start thinking, oh dear, I think this person's not all there. And then you say, uh, the weather's nice today. And they say, the weather's nice today. And you think, um, right, you say, I've got to go now. I've got to go. And, and you never talk to that person again. You think they, com they you know, completely lost it. When you meet somebody, musically speaking, ideally what you're going to try and do is call and response. So let's try something, okay? Let's try things. I will sing one of those little responses to our little track here. And you at home have a go at responding. Okay, now if you're playing along on an instrument, as I said, use the notes D, F, G, A, and C. Those are the notes that I'm using. I'll explain why in a minute. But those of you singing along at home, sing whatever you like. Change pitch if you want. Okay, just respond to my call here. All right, so let's give it a go. And if you get stuck, just sing one note. You can go ba, 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 to something like that. Keep it simple. I think the most important thing to do, though, folks, is as we sing, see if you can just make sure you're feeling that groove. In fact, before we sing anything, Let's just get that groove really, really solid. Listen to it, okay? 
One, two, three, four. One, two. Can you feel that pulse? Of course you can. And what we're going to do, we're going to clap on what's called the back beat. Now the back beat is two and four. Okay, it's where the snare sits in rock drums. It's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. With me, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you want to, you can get your shoulders grooving as well. Feel that beat. One, two. Very good. Very good, folks. Okay. So once we've got that groove going, it's like having the engine running in the car. Okay. So I'm going to sing something and you make up something. Okay. Just a little response. And if you get stuck, just sing one note. Okay. My turn first. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. Great stuff. My turn. Ba, 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 ba. Your turn. Very good. My turn. Ba 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 ba. Your turn. Very good. Ba 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 ba. Your turn. Well done, everyone. Thank you very much. Right, we'll stop that. Julie's pointed out this sounds like building bridges. It is. It's the same chords. Um, so fabulous. So that is. Uh, that's often a good way to spark some kind of creative response, a little bit of improvisation, and it doesn't need to go anywhere. It doesn't need to, to, to be anything except just a way of getting your brain to, to break that connection between the instruction booklet and actually doing the music making, okay? I mean, think about it. If we had a way to, to, to just take all the information here away from the printed matter and have it in our heads, well, you'd never need a score, would you? Yeah, it's, this is just the instructions. So if we can put the instructions down and just start to connect with the music making, that's often a way into composition. Well done, everybody. So a little bit of improvisation at the start of a composing session will often yield better results than just starting and saying, well, I'll just play a note because that's like the uh, the dreaded blank paper syndrome, isn't it? When you sit down to write a piece, you think, well, what should I start with? Well, quite often a bit of improvisation will lead you there. Now, um, I was saying to those of you who were playing along with instruments, I don't know if anybody did play along with instruments, but if you did, I said use these notes. Now, this is another technique for those of you who uh, who want to write your own music and want to have a go at doing this, but think, well, there's just so many notes. You know, you look at the keyboard, you look at the stave, there's just, you know, so many different possibilities. One way to, uh, to sort of spark a creative response, I found, is to restrict your choices of notes. And uh, quite often with young people, you know, I've, I've done this with, with reception age, that's sort of four or five years old, all the way through school, you give them what's called the pentatonic scale. And we've spoken about the pentatonic scale on previous deep dives. Uh, the pentatonic scale, well, the, the clue is in the name. Penta, meaning five, tonic, as in notes, it's a five-note scale. And this pentatonic scale here, this is the pentatonic scale on F, I know the fact that it's, uh, it starts on G, but it's, the way you work it out is you take your scale and it's the first, second, third, fifth and sixth degrees of the scale. Give you the pentatonic scale. You don't need to remember that for now. Now, we're, we're in D minor, so D, F, G, A, C gives us a nice little, uh, little range of notes that we can play with. And we can make up a little tune. Sound familiar? It's all pentatonic. Waves in the water would work beautifully with that, as would Erie Canal, as would half of the pieces we do on Quarantine Choir. So if you're going to improvise, if you're going to compose, consider using a small range of notes. Now with that in mind, everybody, um, the, the thing that I said at the start and, 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 uh, and was on the card here was using Scrabble tiles. So what we're going to do uh, we, to, to, to lead us into the second half of today's broadcast is we're going to write a song and we're going to start off uh, using the Scrabble tile technique and then I'm going to try something I've never tried before which is to see if you guys can give me some note suggestions but to begin with we're going to use Scrabble so what I've got here I've got my uh, my bag here and just to prove okay in case anyone wants to accuse me of setting it all up beforehand these are Scrabble tiles so I've got an A there I've got an E there, you can see I've got a C, I've got a B. Now, of course, I'm not going to have an M or a J or an H because the notes 
of the scale don't correspond to that, but I've got two of each and an extra A and E just in case in there. Okay, so I'm going to pull out some random notes and we're going to write a tune, but we need some words. And so the, the poem that I would normally use, particularly with, uh, with young people, is this fantastic piece of Spike Milligan. I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. It makes the peas taste funny, but it keeps them on the knife. Wise words indeed. If you want true wisdom, look at the writings of Mr Milligan. And so what I need here in order for this to work is I need the right number of syllables. I eat my peas with honey. So seven syllables. I'm going to pull out seven notes and that's going to be our first tune. Okay, so we've got a C. We've got a G. We've got another G. So I eat my. So far we've got I eat my. Not bad so far. Again, I'm not looking at these. E. I eat my peas. Now we need another one. What's this? D. With I need a honey. Another D. And then, oh goodness, this could all go horribly wrong. C, my goodness me. C, G, G, E, D, D, C. So it's I eat my peas with honey. And that's just been pulled out of the bag, everybody. I eat my peas with honey. And that's just giving uh, just straightforward um, one, one beat per note. I eat my peas with honey. That's a nice little tune. Now, you could just say that that's it and just put a chord underneath. I eat my peas with honey. Yeah, a C chord fits nicely. One thing you might want to do, just as you're uh, coming up with these sort of ideas, you might want to play around with the rhythm a little bit, because otherwise it's a bit boring. I eat my peas with honey. So what about if we went, um, well, which, which would you say are the important words? I might say, I eat my peas with honey. So I eat my peas with honey, something like that. Or you could go, uh, I eat my peas with honey, something, or I eat my peas with honey. Whichever word you want to emphasize, you might stretch that one out a little bit. Good. So now we want, I've done so all my life. That's six notes. All right. So, I'm, and I'm leaving those ones I picked up before. So now I've got a D, I've, A, done. I've done. It's already sounding better. G. So, A, O, F, my, E. Oh, that's interesting. I've done so, no, I've done so all my life. Oh, that's, that's almost mournful, isn't it? So we've got the first line. I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. So we need a chord that fits underneath that. So we've got D, A, G, A, F, E, probably D minor. Done so all my life. So the first, uh, first line, I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my, no, I've done so all my life. Great. So I'm going to make a little note of that. Now we want one, we want two more lines. We want to twiddle, says Dorothy. Absolutely. Well, I eat my peas, I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. Let's sing like that. So sing with me. I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. Very good indeed, everyone. Well sung. This is, this is all sounding quite quite plausible actually as a piece of music so look i've got a couple more in here it makes the peas taste fart neat seven syllables so the last one's in the bag we've got b uh it makes b e that's quite appropriate b e needs an n or a b uh then the next one is an f and then a b so it makes the peas and i quite like the fact that that's got that tritone in it because that makes it sound a little bit uncertain so it makes the peas now we need to choose some more so i need some suggestions from you ladies and gentlemen i need uh, an a b c d e f g the first one to appear in the comments will dictate what the next note is we need three more notes and the order that you comment in will dictate the next three notes okay no flats no sharps uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, G. What are our next three notes? Let me know, everybody. And I'm going to have a little sip. 
What do people think? People are saying, is it because only a few notes are included, Julie? How is it sounding so legit? That's a really, really good question. Um, in the se well, Because we've only got that small number of notes, and you'll often find when you're picking stuff out of a bag, you know, it, sometimes, sometimes things flow quite nicely. Okay, great. So we've got C, G, G. So, it makes the peas taste funny. There we go. So, it makes the peas taste funny. Sing with me, everybody. It make, makes the peas taste funny. And then, right, I'm going to just stop this now because I've got a whole load of notes. got B-A-D-C-A-A-G. So, but it keeps them on the knife. But it keeps them on the knife. It's the last line, everybody. Sing for me, one and two. But it keeps them on the knife. So our whole tune, and this is bear in mind, I'm reading it from various Scrabble, Scrabble notes and your comments, but this is our piece that we've just written here. Okay, so it goes. I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. It makes the peas taste funny. And then, but, but it keeps them on the knife. Let's do it again. I eat my peas with honey. I've done so all my life. It makes the peas taste funny. Uh, but it keeps them on the knife. And it is, as Julie said, it is sounding legit. A lot of it is down to the chords that I'm putting underneath. And the fact is we're only using seven out of the possible 12 tones. Remember when you're looking at a keyboard, you are expecting to see things like C sharps, D sharps, F sharps, and so on. We've taken those all away. And all we're left with is one scale. OK, and this what I'm trying to get at with this is if you use only the notes of a scale, well, then everything that you write will work. OK, if I had all 12 tones in this bag, if I had B flats and F sharps and so on, it would sound very, very different. So what I'd like to do to finish with, because that was almost, almost acceptable. Um, what I think we'll do, let's try something completely and utterly off the wall. Could I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to give me seven more notes, including sharps and flats now. So let's see what happens when we include all of the uh, of the possibilities. And this is truly random. OK, give me some notes and we will write a version of I Eat My Peas With Honey. <laughs> Julie says, I think it's a hit. Uh, this one will be a little bit more off the wall. So we've 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 taken off the restrictions. You can give me uh, any 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 note you want. B flat, C sharp. Uh, double sharps if you want, not that that makes much of a difference. And we will write, I eat my piece with honey based on your uh, your notes as they come up. So ah, there we go, they're starting to come up. So in fact, let's have a look at those on screen. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to make a little note of these as they come up. See, I've never tried this before. What's called aleatoric composing, this sort of random chance. Okay, so the order that we're seeing this in this is the order that you're saying it. So there we are. We've got F sharp, D flat, B flat, F sharp. <laughs> okay, let's do it. So F sharp. Okay, let's try it. So this is the tune that you guys have just written. And we as a choir have just composed a melody. Okay. And we could attach it to I Eat My Piece With Honey, but let's just enjoy it as a tune. So this is your tune, everybody. Dorothy's put Hemi on, I love it. Okay. Here's Anne's. Nor. And here's Christine. And Julie. There we are. 
So everybody, we have just composed a melody. And what I could do is I could add a little pad underneath that, just some, just some fourths or something. Let's put some, let's have some strings. And I'm gonna play that again, as this is our nice sound. Oh, I know why that's not working. Let's put my strings on here. And, uh, and we'll play that one more time. So what we've done today, ladies and gentlemen, is what, well, what I hope we've done, is to show you that when you're writing music, first of all, there isn't a right or wrong. There's just what you think. And if you think it sounds good, well, chances are it probably does. But having said that, we also have the option of, uh, of just writing random stuff, stuff that sounds nice and stuff that just is anarchy, as we say, in musical form. So one more time, this is Home Choir, <laughs> our version of a melody. Here we go, everyone. And... Scroll down, and then here's Glennis. And then here's Anne. And Norb, finally. There's your F flat. So everyone, what we've done today is we have, I, I hope, opened a door in your mind, anything can be composition. If you want to have a go at singing along and playing along with me, well, how about next time, if you have an instrument in your house, and it could be anything that plays a melody, it can be a recorder, it could be, I think I saw someone saying they had a, a harmonica, a keyboard, guitar, anything you want, bring it along next time, and we'll have a look at some other techniques that we can use, where you take those little improvisation ideas, and we tease them out, we turn these you know, su supposedly random patterns into actual melodies. So next week, we're going to look at how you write that response and how you come up with maybe not the perfect response, but certainly a response to that question. So you're not standing there on the street. You're not that person who's going, hello, hello, how are you, how are you? You're actually conversing using melody. But the most important thing is to just know that all of you, if you write a tune in your head, if you write it on your instrument, you are a composer. And I'm giving all permission to enjoy the act of just trying, just putting one note in front of the other. Because if it sounds good to you, chances are it's good. Uh, and that's a piece of advice that was given to me by my great, great friend and mentor, Eric Weatherall, whose composition, compositions, as you know, as a composer, he is second to none. Um, and so if that helps you, it's, as it's helped me, well then, uh, that's fantastic. Thanks ever so much for your time today, everybody. Um, it's been really, really interesting and really good working on this. And if you want to join me next week, well, please do tell everyone you know to come along and have a go, particularly if they're interested in music but don't like the whole singing thing. Get them to come along and see what they think. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you on Friday for a little bit of what you fancy does you good. So a bit of Marie Lloyd to take us into the weekend. In the meantime, everyone, have a good day. See you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.